Avraham Avinu would face arguably the greatest test of his life in the beginning of this week's Pasha, and indeed a challenge that the Jewish people continue to face until this very day. Indeed, according to Rabbeinu Yonah, remarkably he said that this was the 10 tests, the 10th test, even harder than the binding of Isaac, because we know that Chazal and Pirkei speak about Asaranis Yonot, there were 10 tests that Avram was tested, and most of the different opinions amongst the Rishonim medieval commentators say it ends with the binding of Isaac. What could be harder than that? Rabbeinu Yonah says what happened in this week's parsha is even harder, remarkably. The burial of Sarah. Sari Imanu died, according to Chazal, Rashi brings it, um, after the Akadat Yitzchak, unexpectedly. Avram was not expecting it. His wife passed away at a relatively young age for the time. And incredibly, he has nowhere to bury her. Avram Avinu, which has been promised time and time again, firstly, go to the land, Lech Lecha, and he comes to the land, and Hashem time and time again says, walk in the land and everywhere you see every part of this earth of this land i will promise to you yet despite these multiple promises when push comes to shove Aram Avinu, in the state of sudden grief and death where we are exempt from the mitzvot where when we have to bury somebody and he is grief stricken and yet at this time he comes to find a place to bury her and he owns not one part of this land despite all of God's promises. Not only does he not own the land, he now has to beg, borrow and steal, so to speak. Not to steal, but to bow down and degrade himself time and time. How many times is that he has to bow down? And then not only that, when he manages to secure land, he pays an outrageous price of the best international currency for a land, a tiny piece of land to bury his wife of land that has all been promised to him. Remarkably, he does it stoically, passing the test in the most incredible way. This is the test that the Jewish people, one of the great tests we continue to face today. Is there another people on earth which has such a long-standing claim, religiously, historically, legally, to a land in the Jewish people? As Paul Johnson points out in the history of the Jews, and we make this point now, Hamiz Rahi dedicated to Hebron of Parashat Chaye Sarah, that already 4,000 years ago, we just read about Avram purchasing Marat Machpelah, the cave of Machpelah, a legal purchase 4,000 years ago, and yet the very legitimacy of all parts of Israel are questioned today. Israel was founded in 1948, and today in the United Nations, Israel still continues to fight for its very legitimacy, not just for the disputed territories, but for every part of Israel. J Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Haifa, what for others is considered undisputed territory since 1948, for Israel, it's disputed territory. And the disputed territory of Yudava Shomron is called of all the disputed territories in the world, such as northern Cyprus, Kashmir, and so many others are called disputed territory, but for Israel, the Jews is called occupied territory. Every part of this land we continue to struggle with, the Nisayon, the land that we've got the greatest claim to, that Hashem promised us, we continue to struggle with today. But just as Abraham then passed the test with unbelievable belief in Hashem, and stoically, and, and continue to move forward with the march of Jewish history, so too today, we continue to struggle, and Bezrat Hashem, we should continue to merit the land, continue to fight for its legitimacy and normalization of this incredible land that Hashem promised us all those years ago. Shabbat Shalom.